keep it snappy. Hey readers, I'm Abby. I'm Emma. And we're back with another episode of Six Picks. We know that you love historical fiction just as much as we do. So here's volume two of historical fiction. My first pick is The Complete Persepolis by Marjan Satrapi. I actually read Persepolis, The Story of a Childhood, which is the first two volumes. But when you finish that, there is absolutely no way that you're going to just be like, okay, I'm good, I don't need any more of this story. So I decided to skip straight past that and just tell you you should pick up the complete Persepolis. Read the whole thing. It's so incredible. It's a graphic novelization of the author's upbringing in Iran in the early 80s during the Islamic Revolution, and I learned so much reading this novel. It's not a period of history that I was super familiar with, and that's my favorite way to read historical fiction when I feel like I'm really getting a viewpoint that I have never had before. And there are pictures. <laughs> and there are pictures. My first pick is As Bright as Heaven by Susan Meissner. Now, I first picked up this book because it is set in Philadelphia, and I am from Philadelphia, Ooh. so go Eagles! But this book is set in 1918 as men are leaving the city, heading off to the Great War. Pauline Bright, her husband, and their three daughters move to Philadelphia in search of a better life for themselves. And things are full of promise until the Spanish flu hits the city and devastates it, killing 12,000 people. That's insane. Now, the flu touches the Brights and hits close to home but they are steeled in their resolve to survive when they take in a baby who was orphaned by the disease. So this book is so well researched, I learned things about this flu that I never knew before, and also just shows the incredible tenacity of the human spirit. It's a historical saga, it's a family drama, and a coming of age story all rolled into one fantastic novel. My next pick is Green Island by Shana Yang Ryan. This book takes place in Taiwan, and it opens in 1947 with the birth of the unnamed narrator. It's another time period that I really didn't know much about going into the book, and this book spans 60 years in the history of Taiwan, from the end of Japanese colonial rule all the way through the formation of their democracy. And it was such a great way in to learn about this history at the same time that the narrator was learning about it. It gave great context and also it's kind of like that um, trope in movies where someone moves to a new school and they've got a guide to bring them around and tell them about all the different factions. That's how I felt moving through this novel, kind of coming of age with the narrator as she did. This book is a little bit of work if you're not familiar with the period just to make sure that you understand all of the nuances and the contexts. But if you can do that little bit of extra work, it is so worth it because the prose is incredible. And I wanted to follow this family forever. I did not want to let them go. My second pick is Another Brooklyn by Jacqueline Woodson. This book is historical fiction in its flashbacks. When our narrator August bumps into a friend, she's immediately transported back to 1970s Brooklyn, her girlhood, and her friendships. She has three incredibly close friends growing up, and these four young girls are close even as they stare down racism, poverty, violence, sexual assault, um, things that are very heavy. It's as if the seedy underbelly of Brooklyn is coursing along below them, but their friendships and their closeness make them feel almost untouchable and protected. So as I read Jacqueline Woodson's poetic stream of consciousness writing style, I was transported back to my own childhood friendships. My third and final pick is Manhattan Beach by Jennifer Egan. This is an author whose work I really love, uh, but I went into reading this uh, having confused it with another book by Alice Hoffman. Uh, so I really went in blind, not knowing at all what it was about, except that it was set in New York City. And I think that really enhanced my experience reading it because 
everything, everything was a surprise to me. But I will say it is about a young woman who in World War II Brooklyn is working at the Brooklyn Navy Yard and desires to be a deep sea diver. Uh, and at the time, that is not a vocation that women are allowed to pursue. Even during wartime, it's just not done. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, as more and more men are conscripted and go off to war, more and more opportunities open up for women of the period, always with the looming danger that those opportunities might disappear again as the men come home. So it follows her hopes and dreams in terms of what she wants to do with her life. It also follows just what it was like to be a woman living in 1940s America, which was very fascinating for someone who is living in the same place as the narrator many, many years later in different circumstances. My third and final pick is The Movement of Stars by Amy Brill. Now, this novel came out in 2013, but I feel that more people need to know about it. It's never too late it's to never discover late. a book. And fans of Elizabeth Gilbert's The Signature of All Things will really enjoy this book. It's set in 1845 and follows Hannah Price Gardner, who has grown up her entire 24 years in a Quaker community on Nantucket. And she's brought up to be simple and a wife and a mother, but actually she would prefer to be an astronomer. Thank you very much. And she meets a man, Isaac, who is nothing like her, but he also would like to be her student. So the two of them have clandestine lessons in her father's observatory. And when her community finds out, she's forced to decide whether she wants to follow the norm of a woman in her community or follow her love of the stars and the heavens. Amy Brill raises questions about race and class and what it was like for women in colonial America. And it's an absolutely fascinating read that really looks at um, this incredible early female scientist. There you have it, readers. Those are our six picks for historical fiction, volume two. Is there anything that we forgot? A time period you absolutely love? Let us know in comments below or tweet at us at Read It Forward. And for more great reading recommendations, don't forget to sign up for our newsletter at readitforward.com.